people know who you are and that burns me because you fucking you got the better of me that night but you know what bro you didn't i lost before i walked in there and i'm just gonna show you why why you got lucky that night you got fucking lucky bro i'm gonna pump you and i'm gonna make sure your all your fans that are there all the haters that are there i'm gonna make sure that they know Fahud the hood kalabba thank you for joining me my man no way bro it's good man it's good yeah, yeah. It's not very often I get to sit next to a fucking assassin. <laughs> you're, looking, bro, you're looking lean, bro. You're looking sharp. Uh, not yet, bro. This is fucking another, like, eight kegs to go. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, bro. So, for people who don't know, you're like a legit MMA fighter. Yeah. That's what I do, bro. It's my, um, it's my job. Mm. Like, yeah. But there's a lot of delusional cuts out there, too, bro. Like, that fucking... They say they're fighters and all this shit, like, especially on TikTok, like... Yeah? Yeah, bro, it's heaps, heaps. Must do your head in. No, it doesn't, bro. To be honest, I was one of those people once upon a time, but, like, I was just a fat kid. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, I, I was the... I was, like, the fat fucking... The fat kid that... Sorry, done... bro, just get a bit closer to the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, I was, like, the fat kid that fucking trained, but... Um, but like wasn't actually about it you know you were committed yeah no nah, I, I was but i just didn't i wasn't actually about it yeah you know what i mean like i wasn't doing all the extra steps to get to where i wanted to be yeah there's a big difference between someone who does fighting as a hobby and someone who does fighting like for their lifestyle and yeah, their yeah, passion. yeah yeah and i look at you bro and you've got that fire in your eyes right now yeah. you look like you're ready for war all the time yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm not bothered, but you know, that, you have your ups and downs, bro. Like, yeah, that fucking Gladys bitch fucking took like nine months away from me, bro. She locked us up, man. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. let us out. Yeah, Glad wrap butter chicken wasn't yeah. having it. Yeah, no, nah. fucking bitch. How bro. are you? How are you staying like sharp and um, you know, mentally prepared? Because that's the thing with being a fighter, right? Like, it's not just like. You've got eight weeks of camp and you're ready to go. Like, you're constantly beating down on your craft. Yeah. Um, bro, to be honest, like, um, constantly, like, battling that inner bitch. Mm. That's that's all I do. But you don't have an inner bitch. I do. You everyone, have an inner bitch? Everyone does, bro. Yeah. Like, for example, today... Uh, like Suman said, oh, hey, Thursday, get ready, you're going to get fucked, you know, mm. like, and then I was like, fuck, well, maybe I should take it easy today for Thursday, and then I was like, wait, bro, it's not going to make a fucking difference if I do, and then I, I had a hard wrestling session, and I was like, fuck, maybe I shouldn't do jiu-jitsu yeah. today, and then I was like, bro, what the fuck, what do you mean, like, you got to do everything, like, yeah, <laughs> you want to be the best, you got to fucking do everything, like, 100%, man. so, 100%. and the thing it's, is, it's, uh, sorry, no, you're all right. As well, like, it's easy to fall into that trap when you got people around you that aren't there for the same reasons as you. Like, like some of the boys fight, but, like, why they fight, like, it may be different mm -hmm. to why I fight. Yeah. You know? I fight because it's my life. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what I, I, I feel I was born to do. It's ingrained in who you are as a human being. Yeah, since I was 13, bro, I was just fucking obs obsessed about it. Um, what do you think that was? Like, do you think that was embedded in you as a child? Like, you were always meant to be an MMA fighter? Or did something happen in your life that said, this is it? Well, well, bro, like, I, I, um, I... But I, when I was a kid, I was, like, into, like, Jackie Chan and, like, Bruce Lee and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, uh, I was, like, to my dad, oh, for my birthday, can you put me in martial arts? Like, I want to I wanna do that. Mm. And then, like, bro, the next week was my birthday and he signed me up to, like, a martial arts club. And I was, I was, I was in that club for 18 years. I got my Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, I got my second degree black belt in that fucking, in that place, bro. But... The shit thing about it was I was always telling them, I want to fight, I want to fight, I want to fight. Yeah. And they were always holding me back because they didn't want me to uh, excel in that in that field. Like, they just wanted to keep me in the gym, mm. in the dojo or whatever you want to call it, um, 
and be a black belt. Whereas, like, that's like, that's okay, but it wasn't what I wanted. What was your um, discipline when you're in? It's called Kwam Bab Do. What it is, is um, it just literally in Korean means with the hands and feet. Right. That's all it says. Yeah. So it's 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 a style of 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 fighting Hang that on. you we've got a we've got a guess. Hey. I'm sorry guys, my my little friend over here needs to be entertained while we do this. <laughs> He's gonna behave. He's gonna stay quiet. Yes. Um, <laughs> you were saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, bro. So, like. Uh, my like my my like the the whole martial arts was just about self defense you know learning how to do x y and z like in certain situations but it wasn't real fighting like real fighting isn't five second fights mm. do you know what i mean like real fighting is like three three minute rounds like you know yeah and there's always been that debate in the mma community as to which style is the best do you know what i mean so you've got your like jujitsu guys that say jujitsu is the only way and if you know if you become a jujitsu artist you're gonna be the best in the yeah, world all the got... fucking brazilians say that shit <laughs> fuck me then yeah um and so every discipline has this like almost i'm careful to say it but there's almost this tone of arrogance to it that their style is the best one well, you have to have it. Of course. You of have course. to have that arrogance because that arrogance, like, is what the, is like your uh, belief in it. Mm. Like, you know, you stand by it. Like, of it's course. like a religion. Like, when, you, when you're when you preaching, you're like, you believe it. Like, yeah, whatever someone says about it, you're like, nah, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. Where, like, you speak to a jiu-jitsu guy about a certain situation, like saying, for example... Oh, uh, what happens in a street fight if I fall over and then the guy's on top of me? Well, the jujitsu guy will tell you, oh, well, you can grab this limb and then manipulate it and get a break in their arm. Yeah. And then the MMA guy will tell you, yeah, go try it. And then pull his arm out and start whacking you over the head. Yeah. You know? Um, it's not... The thing is, every style has their own efficiency. 100%. Di and disefficiency as well, right? Yes. So yes. you can be really good at jiu-jitsu, but the reality is every cage fight or every street fight starts on your feet. Yes. And so you see, guys, even though he wasn't necessarily a jiu-jitsu expert, the wrestler Ben Askren, he was a world-class... Grappler. Uh, grappler and wrestler... Um, within 10 seconds got knocked out. Yeah. And one of the like craziest knockouts of all time, man. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. But like, see, shit like that can happen to anyone. Like, mm. honestly, like, I reckon I could have done that to Ben Askren, to be honest. <laughs> but, bro, like, Ben Askren is a world-class grappler, like, no no doubt. But uh, MMA is different and styles make fights. So... Mm. What I mean by that is, if you put a grappler against the striker, um, the grappler can win if the striker is not good at holding distance. Yeah. So you could put a kickboxer against a fucking world class grappler, but if that kickboxer is flat on his feet and throws a fucking hard kick and that grappler catches it, that's it. That that kickbox is finished. Yeah. But if you got a guy who doesn't know how to kickbox but can bounce on his feet and move and throw a one-two and keep his range, mm. then that grappler is going to have a very, very hard time. Of course. Getting the grapple on. Of course. And will get picked apart the whole time. Whereas, like, people will go, oh, bro, this guy's a fucking crazy grappler, bro. He's going to knock him out. But then I think about it and I go, bro, that guy's going to get taken down as soon as he throws that kick because he's not throwing it against grapplers all the time. He's throwing it against kickboxers and kickboxers play that game where it's like, ba 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 But what the grappler will do is just stop that, grab it, and take you down. Yeah. MMA fighters, like for myself, for example, I'm not a very good kickboxer, but my MMA striking is on another level. And like, you could get a kickboxer to go against me in MMA, and I'll light him up. But put me in a, in a ring and it's slow, it, it, might, it might be different where yeah. I can't move. So again... Stars make fights, fights, and where you fight is also very important. Like if you fight in a cage, if you fight in a ring, it all it all like affects it.
Mm, of course, your environment has a huge part to play with it. So in saying that, like you are obviously, I mean, we'll show some clips a bit later on, but you're obviously a very elite striker. Yeah. When you're on your feet and you're throwing hands, like, bro, those are bombs. Those are <laughs> concrete slabs yeah. just Bah, hitting yeah. you in the face, hitting you in the jaw. You know what? I don't actually hit that hard. I just have really good timing. I would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I hit you hard. No, but I honestly, like when I spar in the gym, my number one concern yep. is is having is having very very good timing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like to throw as hard as I can. Because when I do that, um, I'm relying on my speed and power. Mm-hmm. But I always like to rely on my timing and precision. Because if you have that, and then you add speed and power to it, bro, it's just a fucking recipe for for murder. Yeah. Honestly, it is like... And I mean, we've seen that firsthand. I mean, the trademarked hood wave. <laughs> I mean, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a gentle show. I want to pull that up because yeah, you, who up. are you up against? I forgot his name. Um, uh, the, my first one. Nate. Fight? Oh, Nate Clitcher. Yeah. yeah the, the, Nate the, Clitcher. Bro, this, bro, do you want to, I'll tell you a story about that. Yeah, tell me. So, bro, this guy fucking, I was at, I was in Adelaide and, and this guy, um, Alex, Alex, my, my, um, my training partner. Mm-hmm. We went there for like, uh, Josh Togo's, fight he was the main event and um bro (laughs) we were there i was training for a fight like two weeks after and and then one morning so you were just going to support yeah bro and we're high as fuck all the time (laughs) bro because the weed in Adelaide is fucking insane bro yeah 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 and bro we we were we were fucking we're baked bro we're just all the time and um bro he goes we, we wake up one morning and he's like to me oh he goes, bro, would you fight? And I was like, where? I was like, what do you mean? And then, no, sorry, I didn't say where. I go, I go I'm like, yeah, where? Yeah. But like, when I said, yeah, I didn't really want to. But I knew that like, if I said no, I was going away from my goals in life. Of course. You know, but you I didn't to want to do of, it. You kind of have to say yes to every opportunity, don't you? Yeah, you can't be a no person. Mm. Like, you just got to go, yep, yep, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. The, um... The and then he's like, Oh, Diamondback. And I was like, What? Diamondback? I was like, Fuck, that's crazy. Like, it's yeah. a fucking hectic show, bro. Like, it's a it's fucking in Adelaide Oval. Mm-hmm. Um, Decent crowd, yeah. There's like heaps of people there, bro. It was mm-hmm. packed to the shit house. And bro, Adelaide's a small place, like, so it's very intimate. Like, the people like remember you, yeah. They have a tiny population, it's yeah. only like a million people yeah. or something, yeah. And, and bro, they all follow MMA there. Like, it's a really? fucking it's cool, bro. It's a really cool show. Like, if you ever go to Adelaide at that time when they're when the show's on, bro, go to it. It's yeah, I'll have mad. to check like, that out. What was it called? Diamondback, Diamondback, yeah. Sweet, they're, they're cool, bro. Anyways, I don't want to leave the people waiting too long. Let's yeah. pull up this clip yeah, man, up. because this is wild. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've watched it a million times, yeah. But let's yeah. make it a million on one here. Instant is a little bit slow. All right, you know I'm gonna run it. I think I should load. Okay, restart it again. No. All right, I'm gonna do it in post. I'm gonna put the video clip up there. But basically, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's the internet, man. I'm so sorry. No, that's all right. Um, basically, you came in. I think you faded like two punches and came in with this clean overhand yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, he threw a kick. I made a miss. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I fainted and then he threw that inside leg kick and I, and I overhanded him at the same time. And you got um, him clean. Yeah, it was in like 58 seconds. That is Under wild. a minute, bro. What Some is- people don't even last that long in bed. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, he doesn't either. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> bro, this fucking guy, yeah? Yeah. He was 2-0. and I was 2-0. and Bro, when I saw him, bro, bro, this was at welterweight. It wasn't even at my weight division. Wait, so you went two weight classes up? Yeah, and I was, I, I weighed in at 74. <gasps> he weighed in at 77. Damn. And bro, he had a massive fucking tattoo of the devil, bro. No. Like, you know the, the goat? Baphomet? Have you seen Baphomet? Yes, yes, yes. He's like used in all the fucking posters and yeah, stuff, like, right? Yeah, and it's holding like a moon here and a... And a yep. yep. Bro, yep. he fucking had that tagged on him with like this fucking satanic writing and shit. 
And bro, I was like, fuck. I go, bro, I'm gonna kill this guy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this guy's a devil worship because this guy's gonna go. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if this guy beats me, God, when I die, it's like, I'm gonna go to God. He's gonna be like, you had one fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is gonna be there and be like bro you kind of a fucking bash at devil worshiper bro <laughs> fucking hell man well listen man you beat the devil worshiper so yeah. I reckon you're in God's book good books now <laughs> yeah yeah for yeah. sure what's bro. um because you said there like you took in a last minute fight you're going two weight classes up yeah and when you're going into that ring like when you're making that ring war you know Mike Tyson talks about it a lot where he says like he starts off like a little boy and he's very nervous. Yeah. And then slowly as he walks towards the ring, he becomes more and yeah. more and uh, more confident. <laughs> he feeds off that energy. And by the time he gets in that ring, he says, I'm a god. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? So yeah. with all these factors going on in your head, what's going through your mind as you're walking up? Bro, when I'm in the back, like, I'm the fucking... Uh, like, I try and, like, everyone's nervous. Like, some people are, like, fucking can't breathe. <sighs> or some people, like, got their headphones on and they're just pale white and they're just mm. sitting there. Some people are, like, trying to act normal, but they look fucking so nervous. Yeah. Me, I'm like, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, look at that. Like, we're going to fucking go in there and punch on. That's hectic. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I try and take the edge off like that. Yeah. I go, bro, even if you get pumped, like, fuck it. Who cares? Mm. What are they going to do? Like, what are they going to say? Yeah, you lost. Or oh, whatever. It is what it is. Like, yeah. Like, I used to be so obsessed about not losing. Mm. Um, and that's when I lost. Right. The, my first loss was when I was so obsessed about not Against losing. Against this Neem guy, Neem right? guy, yeah, bro. Yeah. It's Neem cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I was so like concerned about not getting that O taken away from me. Yeah. Got to 4-0, and o, you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking... It's 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 a it's a pretty good achievement in of MMA course. to get four fights and, and zero losses. And the fight um game for whatever reason, I think it started with Mayweather in boxing. Like they treasure and hold that urge. Boxing's a little bit different. Um, in MMA, you can have like you could have like two losses, mm-hmm. and you can still be a sick hunt. You know what I mean? Like it just depends on like how you lost and when in your career you lost. Yeah. Like the best thing to happen to someone is losing their pro debut. Really? Yeah, bro. Fucking oath. I say, I wouldn't expect you to say that. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's your pro debut. It's like, fuck, oh, you lost. Fuck, what it is, what it is. What's There's his amateur? Because no- think about it. You lose your pro debut, the person looks at it and goes, all right, what's his amateur record? And then they go, oh, he was five and one and he debuted pro and he lost. Yeah. And then he had a nine fight win streak. Mm. So how can you say that guy's shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. The expectations are lower. On yeah. Your debut. So in any way, I try and take the pressure off myself. Like, I used to get a lot of anxiety sparring uh, on Saturdays at the gym. Mm-hmm. And because like, I'd be vaping or something or, and I, I knew deep down I wasn't fit. So what I used to do was I used to, the night before, get off my head. I wouldn't do it on purpose, but mm-hmm. like if someone said, hey, let's go out, I'll say, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Knowing that I would get two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep or whatever, but I would still go to sparring with no pressure because I'm like, Mm. bro, if I get knocked out today, I've had three hours of sleep and I was off my head last night and I was drinking or whatever. Yeah. Bro, like, who cares? Yeah, you've almost got like these built-in excuses. Exactly. And those built-in excuses take the pressure off and that's when you usually perform the best. My best rounds at the gym were on two hours of sleep and and post like partying. You know, like every um, motivational video, every motivational speaker would say like the exact opposite of yeah. what you're saying right now. But, but just find it funny. Yeah, Do you but know what that's I mean? that's 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 because those people don't actually understand what it is to have a life. Yeah, a proper life. Mm. Like they're obsessed about motivating or whatever. But like, bro, I was the fat kid that had a social life that wanted to be a fighter well if you want to be a fighter and you want to make it you can't have a social life like everyone else mm. so i so in order to have both you got to kind of understand the mental side of it mm. like like if you if you're so proper and so fit and then you go out you're not going to be ready for the next week you're not you're going to go into the gym half ass mm. but if you're not always so fit and proper 
and you just go, yeah, I'll go out. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. But you back it up. Like, you go, no, nah, doesn't matter, but doesn't matter. I'm still going to be at the gym the next day. Yeah. Then you're better than that guy that's fit all year round. Why? Because when that guy that's fit all year round gasses out in a bad situation, that mental shit, that mental side of his is going to come out. Mm. Whereas your mental is always on. Mm. You know, you're always tough in the mind. You go, nah, fuck it. I'm never folding. I'm never going to tap. Mm. I'm always going to get out. I'm always going to keep going. And that's what I believe is motivating. for. Like, that's how I motivate people. Of course. Go and- do your drugs. Go do your party stuff. Go drink. Go out. Go hang out with your friends. Go do whatever you want, but back it up. Yep. If it gets in the way of what you do day to day, then it's an issue. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Of course. And the... um. You're not the only one in saying that as well, because I remember, was it the Chicago Bulls he was playing for? Dennis Rodman. He would, like, before huge games, would take a week off and just go and party in Las Vegas. Yeah, or just bro. go and party, you know, wherever it was. Yeah. Um, And he was very, very well known for being a wild card. You know what I mean? Like, he was dating Madonna at one point. You know, so to kind of have this attitude towards athletics or this attitude towards sports in general that like you have to be super disciplined all the time. I mean, sure, maybe for like 60% of athletes that works. Champions are like that. Mm. Champions are like that. But I don't want to be a champion. What do you want to be? I just want to be... Oh, oh, that's a good question. Um, I just want to be... One of the most exciting fighters of all time. Right. I just want to be a really, really like interesting personality that can mm. fucking fight, bro. A bit draw That's, card. Yeah. Like, mm. I want to be in a position where the, where the UFC is like, hey, bro, we want to give you a title shot. Mm. But I don't want it. Like, I actually don't. Like, I actually don't want a belt. I don't care about any of the belts. I don't care about any of that shit. I just care about what goes on my record and I care about... um. The impression I make to the fans. That's yeah. it. That's all I care about. Like the mm. show business side. Because, yeah, I love training and stuff. And it's, it's it's what I do. But the fans don't care about that. Yeah. The fans don't care about how much I'm in the gym. No, like, they want to see the water bottles thrown. Yeah, they want to see, the see all that shit. You yeah. know? And yeah, all right, bro. I'll give it to you better than any of these guys on the card. Yeah. You know? Like, you're going to be saying, bro, this guy should have been main event. Like, yeah. that's what they're going to... That's what I want them to think. Like, mm. and... And, like, the people that want to be the champions are the people that I look at and say, bro, I don't want to live like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll I'll probably get there, like, close towards it, but never because I'm so disciplined or Mm. never because, you know, like, I'm a... I'm a hundred percent crazy athlete or like yeah. whatever. Like, and I don't look, I don't want to mislead people in thinking that you're just never rocking up to training or anything like that, bro. Cause I see you at the gym. We train at the same gym. Shout out Australian top team. Yeah. ATT for life. ATT represent. <laughs> just got the shirts. I'm part yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you put in the work, man. You put yeah. in the hours. If you're not training yourself or if you're not training with the jiu-jitsu guys or the wrestlers or the strikers, you're coaching. And yeah. I think that coaching avenue as well is so instrumental for you. 100%, Because bro. you're not only you're teaching the fundamentals to people who don't know as much as you do, but you're also like strengthening those pathways in your brain. You're, 100%, bro. And that's why I did it. Mm. Bro, I'm a civil engineer. Like from, I graduated UTS. Like I did that for like two <laughs> that years. That still strikes me so yeah. weird. Bro. Yeah, bro. But um, like I sacked all that. Because I was like, bro, if I want to make it in this sport, like I got to always be in the gym. Mm. Like the more I'm in the gym, the better. Even if I'm injured, bro, I'm watching class. Like, yeah. I'm not like ever just fucking off from the gym and go, oh, I'm going to go do this, bro. I'm injured anyway. Yeah, you can't take two weeks off. It just doesn't work. No, nah, I'm always in the gym. Literally like... I'm not the fittest person, I'd say. I'm pretty fit, but like, and I'm not the strongest, but I feel very, very intelligent in the mm. gym. Like, I feel like I'm probably got the most, probably one of the people with the most fight IQ. 
like I would 100% agree with that yeah. bro because we've sparred together I've fought you before and man you are in your home yeah. when you're sparring man yeah. or when you're in that cage like you are so comfortable you're yeah. practically dancing yeah. like it's quite hilarious to watch <laughs> <laughs> bro like I uh, bro I get that from my teammates too but like mm. like whoever I train around their style washes off on me of because course. I don't have a style I, I, I practice this thing called look see do which is like just copying people around you and mm-hmm. cop or seeing what's happening and then going off that like like a speech I could never prepare for. I'll just rock up and whatever the first word I say is, the next word's improvised and improvised and improvised. And that's how I fight. Like I start with a faint and then I go from there. Yeah. I faint, they react, and when they react, I just continue. And is your brain like picking away their little cues and stuff? You're seeing like, oh, that hand's dropping a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll hear my coach say, oh, throw this. Mm. Give me a three-piece faint. Uh, uh, uh. And I'll do it. And yeah. then I'll say, oh, okay, he did that. I'll move. Mm. I'll act like I forgot about it. And then I'll throw it. Yeah. And then I'll go or whatever. Um, and when i spar people i practice that all the time mm. that's what i actually practice i don't practice the techniques themselves i'm not even throwing the punches properly but i'm practicing that picking that up quicker like faint see a reaction faint do it mm. do it do it do it faint do it do it do it but like what's doing what it depends on who it is of course you of know? course so that's why like i that's why i like to fight uh, like spar people that are being coached because I listen to what their coach is saying and I see how I can fuck whatever they're saying over. I wanted to ask you that actually um, because in one of our training sessions, you did say this to me, but you said to me that when you're in the cage, you're listening more so to what your coach is saying yeah. and at the same time to what their coach is yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Bro, so my, you- in my last fight, um, <laughs> it's pretty funny because when I thought about it, like when I... Um, in my last fight, when I fought the guy, his coach said, um, uh, angle off the... Th- I don't know what he said, but when I was in the fight, in the middle of the fight, mm. I was like, bro, your coach is a dumb cunt. Like, if you do that, <laughs> I'm going to do this. I s- Honestly, I was thinking that. I was like, fuck, he's actually stupid, bro. Like, why would you tell him to do that? I was like... And then I was like, he should do this. Mm. In my head, as I'm moving around. So, like... Like, think about that level of thinking. Like, it's, yeah. it's not normal. It's like, you know when you, like, listen to Gary Vee talk and he talks about a simple concept, but then he, like, fucking goes real deep into that simple concept and mm. you're like, bro, this cunt's on a Empathy, way. man. It's all about empathy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's how I am in fighting. Like, uh, I'll take a little thing and I'll just go real deep into it, you know? Right. Like, that's how I start the whole process. I, I started that way, like... I I um I just I just keep it going like I just mm-hmm. take it further and further and further and further and I mean like the only time I'm gonna lose, bro, is if they're nah, I'm all good. Is if they're smarter than me, right? And I'm never gonna let that happen mm. because I always I'm always in the gym. Are you watching tape as well? Like, are you watching your old fights? Are you watching other people fight? Are you watching? Your- I try not to watch my old fights. Even though it's really hard not to when you do a good performance, like mm. you just watch it and you go, fuck, I can't believe I did yeah. that shit. Like my last fight, bro, I watched that whole fight like so many times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame you, bro. If I was you, I'd have that on an endless loop but on it's, a big screen in my house. It's so bad though because it gives you a head. And that was my curse, bro. Like, bro, my first fight, I f- uh, iced the guy with an uppercut. It was like hectic. Like, mm-hmm. And the guy was a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So, in saying that, like, bro, if he took me to the... It was like elite sh- grappler versus elite striker, but they've never fought. A perfect class They've match. never fought. It's 0-0. Oh no, it's going to be a mad yeah. fight. First fight of the night. Yeah. When I fucking knocked him, I was fucking... I was like, yeah, motherfuckers, I should have been main event. Like, I was thinking yeah. that in my fucking head. I was just like, you know, looking around saying, fuck you, cunts. These are all fucking haters. Because <laughs> when I was walking in... Bro, like, leading up to the fight, bro, I knew that everyone was saying, bro, this cunt's going to get fucked. Because the guy was from a notorious, like, grappling gym, mm. and he was a brown belt, and he was juiced, bro. Like, he was a juiced up cunt. Like, yeah. literally, bro, at the way, and when you look at my body and his body, I look like a twig. Yeah. And then, like, 
like when you when you see that you're like fuck you know but in my well, head the, the thing is fighting is so deceptive in that sense right like i think the perfect example of that right now is um the logan paul floyd mayweather fight because you looked at logan and you went bro he's got 20 kilos on him he's got a huge back yeah, he's yeah. arched and floyd was just there like no not today yeah yeah not today, yeah not yeah, today. Yeah. yeah you know it's like sparring the big guy that that's new like mm. it doesn't have the experience bro that's yeah. it you're gonna get fucked but bro, bro that that guy i fought they don't have that striking experience bro and he paid for it mm. stole his soul man like he's never fought ever since that day yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to, bro. You got dicked, like, yeah. bad. On your first fight. On your first fight in Whitlam Centre, and it was packed, bro. Yeah. It was full. Do you feed off the crowd, like, the energy? Yeah, there? I love it, bro. Yeah. I, like, I perform way better when there's a hectic crowd going. Mm. Like, I'm, that's my element. Like, I, I have to, like... And the, the way I... The music that I walk out to has to... I have to have like some sort of like sentimental value to it. Like it can't just be any song. Do you have one song in particular? No, every every fight is there's a different like songs mm-hmm. in my playlist that I'm playing in that time, and yeah. then I get over them. I'm like, all right, I've used it, done. Yeah, I don't go back to it. No, mm. and I have songs that are like for my pro debut really? that are gonna mean something to me. Then can you give away one of these songs? Um, well, bro, for my pro debut, I'll. I'd love to walk out to Blood on the Leaves by Kanye West. Ooh. Yeah, because that's my coach's song. Yeah. You know? And like, when it, like, and like. Your coach being Ash? Ash. Yeah. Alex walks out, walked out to it. Like, it's just a heavy song, bro, right. you know? Like, the, I mean, look, any heavy Kanye West will just yeah. hit. Yeah. Well, my first fight, I walked out to Kanye too. And, mm. bro, like, yeah, that's. It's. These little things, bro, make a massive difference. Mm. Like, do you believe in rituals? Do you have like a pre-fight ritual? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What do you yeah. got? Um, bro, you know what? I was actually thinking of a, of a new one. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of like hiring like a fucking Ferrari. No. And driving it to the fight. Shut the fuck up. That would up. be hectic. Like, that would be I, so I, dope. I, like, not to show off, but Come on. like, no, but it's not about that. It's about driving it with music, pumping, mm. like going through traffic, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. like, you know? Like, just uh, jing up, you know what I mean? For sure. Because I don't want to be relaxed too no. hard. I want to be like, boom, boom. I want to feel like a fucking torpedo through And through you've Sydney. got that machine behind yeah. your hands. Yeah, like, yeah. And you just shift your knees. <laughs> <laughs> One of the boys Bro. hired a McLaren. And no. he, yeah, it was like picking up chicks with it and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro it's so funny but but like bro he took me for a drive and i was in it and i thought about it i go bro if i drove this to my fight like bro i'd have like the biggest cock in there like of i'm course. like bro go look at my car this is the <laughs> w- rental, but <laughs> this is the one thing about fighting which i think a lot of people are disconnected from is this isn't a sport where you can go in calm and zen and um, you can you can <laughs> But you have to have an ego about what you're what you're doing. Absolutely, man. Because th- it's so unique from any other sport, man. Fighting is the most primal expression of a human being you can get. You've got two feet, two hands, and like it's just you and one other person. Yeah. You know, man, and it is just guaranteed violence no matter how the fight goes. One way or another, you know you're going to see blood. You're going to see sweat. You're going to yeah. see. Yeah. You know, like there's this in a part of the human that just gets drawn out in a fight yeah yeah, yeah. and you so know, like if the- you need to get into a ferrari or a mclaren even if it's rented who gives a fuck <laughs> if you have to get in there in order to access that part of you then go for it man 100 yeah. percent. yeah yeah I want look i don't know if i'm gonna do it but it would be fucking cool you've said it you have to do it yeah now. it'd be fucking cool bro yeah. um but like yeah no nah, like look bro i have like rituals where like um, I have like pancakes or something on the day. Mm. Like I have something like that, you know. And then my 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 ritual also is like I stop eating at like three o'clock, right? Because that's usually when I train, and I've already been pumping the food the night night before. Is the, that just to like try and put that weight back on? Yeah, and like, bro, like I want my body to digest everything and then not have any food in me. So like, yeah. You know? Oh, and another ritual I have is I always take a shit at the venue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a shit. I play on my phone. I'm like, all right, look, we're gonna go punch on. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah, bro. Like, 
I just like it's it's weird, man. Like if you're not in the moment, a hundred percent, you will lose. Mm. Like you have to be in the moment, a hundred percent. You yeah. can't try too hard with anything. Like, you can't overthink it. No, I think that's the biggest thing that unravels a lot of fighters. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like there's something about sparring, and there's something about training, or hitting pads, or hitting the bag. Um, that you know, it's repetitive. And you're just building a skill, or you're building strength, you're building speed, you're build, building timing. But yeah. when you're actually in that cage, like all that, I don't want to say it goes out the window, but it doesn't mean anything. No. Nah. What means is what you do in that moment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and yeah, it's it's fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. It all starts with how you fucking like. If you g up too much and the person doesn't react to it, it will put you off. Really? Yeah, that's what happened to me in my first fight with Liam. He's very, like, kickback. Yeah, I noticed that. He's very, like, oh, like, you know, like, he's, like, bro, this is what put me off. When we were walking out, like, I was waiting to walk out and he came out and he went like this, like, to touch my hands in the back and I was like, fuck off. Yeah. But, like, why did I do that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Because in normal circumstances, you wouldn't do that. No, and I wasn't being myself, bro. Mm. So, like, I'm just going to be myself, be a bit more playful. Mm. Um, my last fight, my opponent was being a dick, bro. Like, he, he came up to me before the fight at the weigh-in. He's like, oh, the big man himself. Right. Walked up to me. And, bro, like, I'm fucking four kilos deep fucking cut, weight cut over two days. Dehydrated like, as Dehydrated far. as fuck. Not in the mood. Like, fuck off, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then he goes... He was like, oh, the big uh, the big man himself sh- shook my hand. And I yeah. was just like, I was like, don't fucking shake my hand, bro. Like, mm. why are you coming here? Like, trying to like, I don't know, what the fuck's the word for that? He was baiting you for a reaction. Not baiting, like, he wasn't baiting me, but he was like, was it, um, to- it's not talking down, it's, what's it called? It's like when when you condescend, it was condescending. It was being right. condescending. It was like, oh, the big man, like you're the fucking big, big yeah. shot. I'm going to pump you like, kind of like that. Mm. He and was already like, looking past you. Yeah. And I was like, bro, don't fucking shake my hand like that. Yeah. And then I just looked at his hand. I just looked at him. I go, bro, fuck off. And then, <laughs> and then he's like, all right, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how it goes. And then that pissed me off. Mm. And then that's when I went up on the fucking stage and I was jig up. I was like, bro, I'm gonna bash the fuck out of you yeah. because you want you think you're you think you're on my level, but you're not. Mm. You know what I mean? So with this fight, uh, I'm not really gonna be pissed off or angry or whatever. I'm just gonna like, yeah, so I'm just gonna got- smile in his eyes and yeah. honestly tell like. Just to give a little bit of context, I don't want to cut you off. Um, so you've now you've got one loss on yep. your record, right? And that was against Neum. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have to go watch the fight because essentially all he did was sniff your cock for about <laughs> three rounds. I mean, yeah. that's that's literally what it was. He wasn't yeah. interested in throwing punches. He yeah. wasn't interested in yeah. kicking. He just wanted nah. to grab you to the ground. And I, was he going for a submission? Do you think he was going for it? Um. Well, the first round he had a rear naked choke deep. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, he that had a rear naked choke tight. deep. But like, bro, if that was his best effort, like it was pretty shit. And so that was your loss and you lost on points. So you didn't tap out. You didn't get outplayed. It was just generally from the outside looking in because he was in a more dominant position for yeah. the majority of the fight. He won. Fair. He, he stuck to his strategy. He, he did, won. yeah, yeah. You've got the rematch now. Yeah. Which is December 17th. Yep. Uh, the UFN yeah Urban where is Fight it playing night. shout out to fucking Urban Fight Night Urban. best fucking MMA promotion in Australia let's Straight do up. it let's yeah do bro it. Um, that's at Bankstown isn't it yeah Bankstown Postway Bankstown. double two double O brother <laughs> <laughs> I'm hood brother <laughs> So I'm gonna do when I win, bro. I'm gonna grab the mic. I'm gonna do that. You know she's gonna come. Isra. Yeah. Isra there, Bella. There's gonna be a table of TikTokers there. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I want mods to come so I can fucking go up to the block. Yeah, brother, you wanna go? I'm gonna break the fucking internet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna break the fucking internet tonight, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, it's it's gonna be good. Learning from your last fight, um, what's without giving too much away, yeah. obviously, wh- how what's your mentality shift now going into this rematch with Neam? Where, <laughs> bro, I'm just gonna fucking put him away in the first. Yeah, 
bro, like I'm literally going to pump him. Do you have like a prediction, like one particular punch, or is it just gonna nah, be a flurry? No, nah, no, nah. I'm just gonna make him fucking. I'm just gonna put a hole through his head, and if I don't put that hole through his head, I'm gonna take him down and I'm gonna submit him. Right. Yeah. So he's That's fucked. Bold. He's fucked either way. Like, like uh, my yeah. grappling has gotten so much better. My wrestling has gotten so much better. Mm. My striking has gotten so much better. So like, this guy can't beat me in any way mm. unless I make a mistake. Right. He can never beat me with his own like skill. He has to. The only way he can beat me is if I fuck up. Mm-hmm. And the difference between a rookie and a professional. Is about the mistakes they make. And I'm going to go out there that night and I'm going to show everyone why I'm the most professional amateur in this country, bro. And that's facts straight up. I'm going to fuck him up. Like, there's no doubt in my heart. Like, the first time I fought him, I remember Ash was like giving a speech at the end of class. It was the week out. And it was like, oh, um, some of you might lose and some of you might win. And in my head, I was like, bro, I'm not fucking losing. But yeah. like in my gut, I was like, fuck. I feel like I'm going to lose. I don't know why. Where do you think that came from? Bro, like being undefeated. Like it's the shittest thing. Shittest thing is being undefeated. Really? Yeah, bro. 100%. Fuck being undefeated. It's ugly. Yeah. It's the worst thing. Unless you're like Khabib's mindset where you're like, I'm going to smash you, like, you know? Yeah, like, but Khabib's a different beast, you know? I mean, there's videos of him wrestling bears when he was a child. Yeah. And, and look, say what you want about those clips, right? He's so... And I think there's a certain type of human being that this only exists for where his religion is such a fundamental part of who he is. Like, he doesn't party, he's not flashy, he's super disciplined in his religion and his MMA. That's his entire identity. There's nothing else to could be aside from that. And so I think that's what... I reckon really- he's a cocksucker too, bro. But you just don't know. These Russians are all fucking cocksuckers, just like the Americans. But the r- difference between the Russians is they, they act religious in front of everyone, but they're actually more dodgy than everyone else. You reckon? Yeah, bro. They're all fucking lying cunts, bro. Don't believe any of this shit. They just do that... To live with the guilt of whatever the fuck they're up to. Right. Yeah. Trust I mean, me. Look, Russia gets itself into um, a lot of trouble all the time. Yeah, They do bro. a lot of questionable stuff. There's look no question Look at the fucking that. Olympic team of Russia. They're all juiced up. They're all fucking... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're have you watched fu- um, Have you watched Icarus? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Mm. Like, you see that shit, bro. Yeah. You think these cunts aren't doing it, bro? Bro, these... The Russians have substances that aren't even detectable by USADA because they don't even know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And they have like these pioneer drugs. So just to give a little bit of context to people that are listening or watching, right? Um, in the 2008 Winter Olympics for Sochi, um, Russia was hosting it. And they had this brilliant system where essentially they would swap out that hole in the wall and they would use... Um, gang members to swap out dirty urine from juiced up athletes with clean urine yeah, and they had right. all these technologies and all these methods if you haven't watched Icarus on Netflix I highly 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 recommend it yeah, and it good. goes to the very very top to the department of sport and then to Putin himself they yeah. were all aware that was going on they all yeah, orchestrated bro. it and they got into a lot of trouble for it so even now in the most recent Olympics which was in Tokyo was it? Uh, yeah was in Tokyo. Even in the most li- recent Olympics, Russia couldn't have an Olympic team. No. They were just like the Olympic team of Russia or something, but there was yeah. no flag, there was nothing. Yeah. Um, it's a, a statement like that's very, very bold. But I hear what you're saying, right? Like, Russians are notorious for um, skirting around the rules. Yeah. yeah. And- well, good on them, bro, because, like, if you're not cheating, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> straight out it's the truth bro it's the truth it is the truth man like that is actually the truth bro you know do you want to fail or mm. do you want to fucking pass yeah you know what I mean like yeah but I still think there's something to be said about like integrity and something about hard but work but there is no discipline. such thing as that because every single entity in the world is f- lying to someone about something about whatever they're doing behind the back like look look at like look at this shit with Gladys and all that 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a month, two months ago, she was the face of New South Wales. Like she was the fucking bitch telling everyone what to do. Mm. Now she's a fucking uh, uh, a dodgy... A criminal. Yeah, a criminal. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. bro, they're all criminals and they're all doing that. It's just about whether or not you know. Mm. So whatever people don't know and whatever people can't know is pretty much going to determine like how... Uh, like their perception of you, like everyone's got skeletons in the closet. There's no denying it. I've got them. You've got them. Yeah. Khabib's probably got them. Bro, put it this way, yeah. How come Brock Lesnar got done with drugs, like performance enhancing drugs, and was able to fight against Mark Hunt, but when, like, for example, another fighter would get it, they'll get banned. Mm. All right, now. Mark Hunt is actually in a in a lawsuit with the UFC. He's suing the UFC. Really? Yeah, bro. Because he's saying, "Fuck, well, like I should have earned this much, and I should have beaten him, but because mm. he was on performance enhancing drugs, I, I couldn't win." Yeah, I oh, say so he never got compensated for that. Well, bro, what compensated? But Compens- if if um if Brock Lesnar was proved cheating, I would assume that you know it would. The purse would just go to his opponent, Mark Hunt, in that case. No. No? No. There's been a lot of conversation about UFC fighter pay recently. Do you have anything to weigh in there? Uh, Dana wants the man, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, what, do you, what do you expect? He fucking knows what Daddy he's doing. Daddy Dana. Yeah, bro. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. Mm. Like, he's a business, bro. He's, like, taking control of how much people earn. Yeah. That's why like people like McGregor are smart because they put themselves in a position where they can earn more. Yeah. That's why I'm saying to you, I don't care but about being I the champ. I think Connor's I think Connor, I agree with you, you know, like if you're going to go through the UFC route, which is I would assume you want to do as well, right? You yeah. eventually want to end up in the UFC, so Daddy Dana whatever you want, I'll do it for you. Yeah. Um but from the outside looking in, I think McGregor's kind of like an anomaly in that sense. He's like a once in a decade kind of situation. He, you know, he came in at the perfect time when the incident was just ripe enough for him and he was just entertaining enough and the UFC was just starting to kick off. All these components came together and bam. Yeah. Straight up he went. Yeah. I don't know many other fighters that have been able to do that. You could make a case for Israel Adesanya. You could make a case for John Jones. But yep. I think that's more so their fighting style. Because, yeah. you know, you watch Izzy fight and he's essentially just flowing and dancing and showboating in that kind of sense. Yep. But there's not many fighters that can really do that, man. Yeah. You know why? Because they take it too serious. Mm. Like, John Jones is different, bro. Like, John Jones is on that level too. Don't get me wrong. John Jones is on that McGregor level. Oh, he's elite. He's absolutely elite. Yeah. He's on the route, Mount Rushmore of UFC fighters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For like, sure. Yeah, but um, the difference between the two is, like, the reason why they maybe fight. Like, I don't know why McGregor fights, and I don't know why John Jones fights, but I can tell you that, like, bro... Uh, I can't wait to get there and show everyone like what like yeah. what I'm about like straight up because like um bro in the Australian scene like none of the amateurs have done what I've done so far mm. honestly like they and like sometimes I look at people and I'm like bro like fuck you know if I was you what I would be able to do so that's why like I'm not trying to sound like a dick here but what I'm trying to say is like the reason why McGregor did all that is because he made himself valuable mm. at any time he could have done it but any time would have been the right time because of his the way he looked at it yep. do you know what I mean like bro if you if you if you're gonna go in there and fight make a show bro for sure if you're putting your body on the line you're you're, you're literally going into a cage where you yeah. could die talk smack bro fuck yeah. it but do it in a professional and hectic way where yeah. you can't even be fucking no one can talk no yeah. one can say shit I mean bro when he's sitting there on the bench and he's just got his yeah, feet up yeah. and he's like who the fuck is yeah. that guy <laughs> yeah. I mean bro <laughs> well, how classic you don't yeah. get better than that nah bro nah you don't get better nah. than that nah nah nah, nah. that is pure bread 
entertainment, and that's what people want to see. Yeah, that's, that's what, what people want to see. You can hate and shit on McGregor all you want. Hell, I've done it. I've shit on McGregor before in the past. I've done it on this podcast. Yeah. But I've always come at it of an angle of like, I respect so much yeah, what he does. Bro. I respect so much what he is. I just don't think this was the right move for him. Yeah, look, he's fucked up, bro. And heaps. It's fucked up heaps of ways. Yeah, but. like the whole thing, the bar situation with that old guy. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. Like, we, we don't want that. But, but you got to remember, bro. Like, don't forget, like, bro, he's one of the most baggest people on the planet. Mm. Like, everyone's going to be trying to fuck with him, bro. Yeah. He's a human at the end of the day. Like, if you were seeing McGregor walk into a bar and he's drunk and everyone's drunk, people are going to offer him out, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you don't think when I, like, I go out or something, people are looking like, oh, bro, I'd fucking, I'm pumping. Yeah. They'll look at me and they go, oh, he's not that big. Like, I'm pumping, bro. I don't know, bro. You're pretty scary. Nah, I'm not. Honestly, I'm not. Like, uh, I'm a nice guy, bro. Like, oh, no, you're very welcoming as a human being. Yeah. But, sure. the, but there's people that a piece of shit like that. Like, they look at me and they go, bro, I'll fucking pump him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's okay. But, bro, when you get to that level, like McGregor's level, bro, if, if you got a video of you cracking him one, mm. bro, that's it. Yeah, I That's, mean, that TikTok of you um, against, was it the Indian guy? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'll play it for you here just off my phone. I'll put it up in post. Um, man, that was classy as fuck. Yeah. You, who was it? Luke Irwin's TikTok? Oh, do you have it there? Do you Wait, have it on your phone? Um, which, on TikTok? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll pull it up. Um. You were so just. Wait, people. was this at the park? No, 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 no. Oh, is this the TikTok? You guys had like TikTok. the gloves and stuff, and you were just like fainting all these punches and slipping this guy. You knocked his glasses oh, off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, people yeah. don't know you were in some randomly. You were in a YouTube video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that happen? What happened there, bro? Like I was just walking in Paramara, and um, this this guy was like telling people to like spar each other. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, I want to go pump and someone. And who was the guy? He was like Luke Irwin or something. Luke like. Irwin. It was yeah. Luke Irwin. But I had no idea who he was, bro. Yeah. Um, and here it is here. Yeah. So there's just a crowd of people out at Parramatta. I'm going to put the video right there so you guys can watch it while we're yeah. looking at it here. Yeah. And bro, like I didn't even know who Luke Irwin was. Mm. And I wanted to offer out this Asian guy who bashed this other guy that couldn't fight. And right. then he bitched it. And so you look pretty like... I was like, oh, it's all good. It's you all look good. pretty chill. You look yeah. comfortable. Yeah, bro. You're not, you're not putting on the show as you usually would. Nah, because I knew this guy didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And yeah. if I pumped him, I'd look like a gronk. So you guys touch gloves. Yeah. And go. So I was like shoulder rolling. I was like, oh this, oh, this... This form is horrible. Yeah. Chin up, hands everywhere. <laughs> oh, the glasses fly off his head. And you're just faint, like you're slipping every single yeah. punch. I didn't want to like bash him. Yeah. Because like, like, I don't know, bro. You look like a sad cunt. No, nah, there's no need. Yeah. I mean, the guy, you could tell it just from that clip. Yeah. I th- we've seen bro, it. Good. Yeah. You could tell it just from that clip. Like he had his chin up like that and he's just throwing randomly. Hail Marys. Yeah, bro. So bad. And just watching you slip. And slip and yeah, slip yeah. and ah, uh, you can't touch me. Nah, literally I can't, bro. It, like, like they couldn't. Yeah, bro. I got so many of these fucking funny videos. On my yeah, TikTok, bro. You gotta check it out. What's your TikTok? Um, hood underscore ATT, bro. It's Beautiful. so funny, bro. Like this, bro. <laughs> bro, this fucking this guy, this this Indian guy, another oh. Indian guy. <laughs> he came up to me. He's like, bro. He's like, hey, bro, I'm a 6-0 kickboxer from India, whatever. And like, you know, I've never lost. You know, I'm pretty good. And then. And then he's like, oh, um, he's like, bro, we should spar. And I was like, I go, bro, like, just come and train. Because mm. his friend was training with me. I'm like, bro, just come and train and then we'll talk. You mm. know what I mean? And then, bro, he he brushed it. Like, he just didn't get back to me. Mm-hmm. The next week, he rocks up. And, and Were you expecting him? No. Right. I wasn't. And then he came. To the session with his bag, he's like, "Hey, I finished my uh, boxing session at Virgin Active." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, um, he's like, bro, let's um, he goes, let's spa." And bro, I was like, I was getting off the vapes and like pot and shit, and I was mm. like, "Fuck." Okay, you know what? 
I'm going to fucking bash you, bro. I went to my car. And mind was, you, this is like 7 o'clock in the yes, morning. Yes, and I'm wearing slides. Oh, my God. All these videos of my TikTok, I'm in slides. It's going to be right here, It's going to be my thing. Yeah. It's going to be my thing, the the slides. The yeah, boxing in slides? Yeah. That's a play. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? In the comments, everyone's like, oh, um, he, did the, he goes, you knocked him in slides too. He goes, fuck, <laughs> that's shit. Professional yeah. kickboxer undefeated. Yeah, bro. Well, I'm, I'm more comfortable without shoes, to be honest. So. Of course, because you fight without shoes. Mm. yeah and then um bro he rocked up and then i was like all right bro you want to fucking go let's have a go mm. Is this real or fake? so i set him up parry jab yep Ooh. What's this? oh my god <laughs> he fell for like 30 seconds there. That <laughs> i was amazing. like oh i was like oh what you... did you hit him with was it like overhand right hand? i parried no, no, no. out boom you love that overhand yeah right? that's yeah, he's done. I was like, shit, he walked into that one. Yeah. And bro, this was the Kung Fu. Oh, this is the the new guy. This was the last weekend. Bro, this guy messaged me on the Kirabili page, right? Mm-hmm. And and he's like, oh, mate. He goes, I love what you do. Whatever, we should train. I was like, bro, if you want to book a session, let's do it. Yeah. You know? And then he's like, oh, nah, I wasn't thinking like I'll train. I'll get you to train me. I was thinking like we should exchange some knowledge like... Um, I'm a Wu Chu like master, you know. A what master? A Wu Chu like kung fu fucking. That sounds bullshitty yeah, already. Yeah, <laughs> but I was like, all right, like, okay, bro, if you want to exchange what you what you know, like, let's do it. So in my head, I'm like, bro, you know what? I'm gonna fucking build this guy, put him on my TikTok, <laughs> and bro, <laughs> it's it, a new one. It's got like forty three thousand views. No way. Yeah, bro, pumped. And he whacked oh, me. He's got no chance. He whacked me. Tell. He fucking full whacked he's me. He's got a nice jab. Ooh. Oh, listen to his reaction. His hands are back up. Body listen shot. Listen to this. Right hook. Overhand. Listen to this. <laughs> I'm just... still recovering from the first one. Mm. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Oh, he's like, yeah, no, I come the good one. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Bro, he, you yeah. could tell. I mean, these guys, that's the thing, right? You can't play fighting. You don't get to nah, play fighting. Nah. Like, if Bro, you, there's a lot of delusional people, bro. Yeah, because here's the thing, right? People watch it at, on TV or they watch highlights on Instagram, which I think is even worse if you're not even watching the full fight. People are watching it and think, oh, I can do that. Yes. I know how to kick. Bro, we're talking I know how to about punch. it today. I can do that. We're talking about it today or like, bro, like, the uh, like Instagram and TikTok and shit. It's it's made people like think they can fucking fight. Mm. Like just anyone. But you know, bro, when you train, like how hard is it actually? Oh, for sure. I've There's been training with. I've been training with you for about eight months now. Yeah. And Fuck, it's been eight months. It's been eight months, Fuck man. Yeah, bro. Respect, Sick, man. Oh, and I, I love it. I'll be yeah. there for years. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. No, bro, I'm not going nowhere either. Good. If you um if you are looking for privates or you want to get started in UFC or MMA rather. Yeah. Um, hood's the way to go. Thanks, a hundred percent. Keeps it simple, fundamentals. Get the good stuff right. You know, I've been doing it for eight months. I've done heaps of sparring, done heaps of pad work, heaps of bag. Well, not that much pad work, but yeah. rather heaps of bag work and shadow boxing or whatnot. A lot of technique, and I still wouldn't have the audacity to call myself a fighter. Do you know well, what I mean? you are, bro. And look, everyone is, but they just gotta know how so, like, and how they are. You know, yeah. your your fight is different, bro. You you have other shit where. You, you know, like, you, you walk in the gym and you fucking have a crack with everyone too, bro. For sure. You know what I mean? And that's all it is. Like, you don't have to go in the cage to be a fighter. It's just a lifestyle you live. Like, how, mm. how are you as a person when you walk out of the gym? How do you treat things? Like, do you fight everything or flight everything or what? Mm. What do you do? Like, do you bitch it or do you fucking go, you know what, bro? Fuck it. It is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. There is definitely a mentality shift that happens after you start getting good at this thing. 100%. And I wouldn't bro. even say that I'm getting good at it, but like, I'm getting You are, I'm bro. Okay. Honestly, I'm getting you've, okay. You, you've improved a lot. Thank you, bro. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you do. But um, there's definitely been this shift in my head where I'm like, suddenly, you know, my back's up straighter and I'm yes. speaking more confidently. Yes. And, you know, I approach things in life. You look at people in the different. eyes when 100%. you talk to them. You're not more like, you're not like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, I've, and I can see that, bro. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, look, you've done this, bro. This is crazy. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Would yeah. you have done it before? Maybe no, not. definitely not. Definitely and not. you know what? Like, 
that's why I do my job because I fucking like bro like every single person bro that I've trained has developed in some sort of way mm. and fuck bro like I love it it's way better than anything bro it's oh, the sure. fucking best feeling and like the reason why I also fight is is for you guys because I want you guys to see like bro I'm in your position too but I just have different I just in a different way like I'm still getting better like mm. you know what I mean like you guys should all become better than me eventually. <laughs> Honestly, you guys should. If he's put in the work, yeah. like, you, you, why not? I mean, hey, I hope so. Yeah, yeah and, for sure. And, and I'm not the type of person to hold you back from that. Like, no. I will get you. I will make you go there. Like, if anything, if, you push me. Yeah, you go. You're sitting too comfortable here. Go in deeper yeah. waters. Go yeah. in deeper waters. Yeah. Oh, your striking's getting okay. All right, here's jujitsu. Yes, you yes. know. And then, like, you know, you mix it up and all that shit, and like. Um, that's why like like just everyone around me bro I just want to inspire them to do whatever they love doing like what impact does the so like from my level right looking at you as a mentor and as a coach I kind of feed off of your energy and I go okay well this is what we're doing this is what we need to focus on but you're in a very unique position in that you've got um suman for example who is world class in jiu-jitsu and you've got ash who's a very strong wrestler and a very strong striker and alex is a very like very good kickboxer I th- kickboxing right That's yeah his but he's team. got like very elusive different kind of striker. Mm. he's an interesting one yeah he's an he's, interesting he's, one. He's, bro. Um, he's my boy man. but regardless you've got all these different people around you and they're all feeding into who you, how you fight how does that relationship work um fuck that's a good question um bro like how it is like like suman is very methodical with mm-hmm. how he explains things he's like look bro you gotta go in there you gotta do this mm-hmm. you know what i mean ash is not as strategic and methodical but he is strategic in in an emotional level like which i love it bro like he knows how it is deep down like yeah you know like like the he won't tell me what to do but he'll be like bro go in there and get your respect mm. like he's not saying do this do that do this or do that he's saying bro go in there and get your respect and make sure you fucking do fake that shit and do this and do that you know, like if you hear him, if you watch my fight and you hear him corner me, oh, like, you can hear him for you sure. Won't, you, yeah, you won't. You, he won't be saying some like something in particular, but he'll be saying a concept to apply, mm. like, and and emotionally, bro. Like, I need him there. Yeah. Methodically, I need Suman there. Like, I need Suman to tell me what to do. Sometimes, you know, like. If Subin says, get, get this, do this, do this, get this, get this. Yeah. He'll do that. Alex is like the swag. He'll be like, he'll bring out the swag in me. Like yeah. he'll say like, oh, give me this, give me that. Like we got little code words. Like give me a Robbie Darwin. A Robbie Darwin's like an uppercut left hook. Cause Robbie's the guy I knocked out with an uppercut and all Darwin throws is a big left hook. <laughs> <laughs> so like he'll say shit yeah. like that. Like we yeah. have code bro. Like we don't even need to fucking, you know what I mean? Like, we have a we got a different wavelength. That's why, bro. This this sport is a team sport. It's not a fucking individual. And you sport. wouldn't think that. No, yeah, but it, it's a big, big team sport. Like, bro, like we're brothers, bro. We're family. Like straight out, like, like, like it's crazy, bro. Honestly, it's so crazy. Like, like it trips me out. Like yeah, how I mean, well we all know each other. Like yeah. we know each other so fucking well. Like mm. because, like you see the real side of people, bro. When they're in a fucking fight when they're getting pumped or they're in the gym and they're getting bashed you see actually how they are as a person Mm. you know what i mean like something i learned about myself from a loss is bro i don't give up i'm not gonna give up i'm not gonna tap i'm still gonna fight my way out yeah you don't tap yeah and i'll uh and like in the gym i'll tap but it's not because i pussy out it's because i'm just smart yeah like i just go bro i don't want to get injured or like he got it fuck but it's different when you're in a gym as well do you know what i mean because yeah. there you're just you're sharpening that blade but some you know? people are not like that they're always like no nah, never tap if you put me to sleep you put me to sleep but that's dumb bro if you're not defending or like you're not peeling the choking hand 
Then, bro, you're fucking a dumb cunt. You're just gonna get put to sleep. You're not trying yeah. to get out. And it just takes one person to do it. You know, yeah. it might be someone who you think is shit, and they're just having a really good day, and they catch that, you on the bro. Back that's foot. the worst thing, bro. That's the worst thing. That's why I always tell everyone like. If someone tries to put it on you or someone's new, you got to put it on them. Yeah. Because, or not put it on them, like, in a, if they don't know how to fight. Like, let's say, like, we're on we're inspiring on Saturdays at the gym. Mm-hmm. And a new guy, a, a, a fucking fighter comes from another gym. Bro, I'm going to bash the fuck out of him until Suman tells me to relax. Yeah. Because why, if he could put it on me and talk shit after, he would. At your gym as well. 100%. Bro, yeah. I went there. I done sparring there, bro. They weren't even that fucking good. I fucking did this. I done that. And they talk shit. And that word goes around. You don't. You shouldn't let anyone have any reason or any possibility to say anything negative about your craft. It's like a business, right? Mm. Let's say you own a business, yeah? And someone walks into your shop and they want to buy a, uh, a shirt, like for example. And you hired this fucking 14-year-old like chick. And it's not her business. She doesn't give a fuck. Mm. But when they come in, she doesn't greet them. She doesn't say hello. She's on her phone. And then when you ask her a question, she's like writing a message and goes, sorry, one sec. What? Like when that customer leaves, they're going to go, bro, that shop's fucking shit. Yeah. Even if your product is hectic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that first impression is very, very important. It's like, it's getting your respect. Yeah. You know, you, if you walk in there and then they greet you straight away, they go, oh, what size are you, man? Like, I like that shirt, but we've got something better here. I'll show you. Yeah. That's going to make them go, fuck, I love this place. Like, mm. you know what I mean? So when someone comes to the gym, that's my business. The, my business is hurting people. My business is fighting. When people come in the gym and they want to have a go, I'm like, all right, bro, I'm going to make sure I put it on you. And then, like, it doesn't even need to be, like, about hurting them, but outskilling them outsmarting them or whatever letting them know letting them know bro like you're not on the level I'm at like I'm just letting you know Mm. and it's not an intimidation thing it's just like bro like just so you know like this is this is why we're fucking good Mm. so when you leave like you can go back to your gym and go fuck bro these guys are fucking legit yeah and um, Australian top team ATT has I mean, I got very lucky in the sense that I just responded to a Facebook post you put out, and you know, I lucked <laughs> the, the boot camps fuck at out the park. badly. I yeah. lucked the fuck out, man, because I didn't really know the MMA scene, especially in Sydney. And as I've kind of developed and gotten more involved in the culture and more involved in what the gym is actually about, I'm like, holy fuck! I hit the holy grail. Yeah. I mean, you look at the t- uh, the comments on any of your posts or any of your TikToks or anything, man, and it's just like, oh, he's an ATT fighter. Yeah. You know, there's a brand to it. Yeah. There's a brand to Fucking it. So oh. what you're saying speaks so true because word just gets out and it spreads, and so you Bro. have to make sure that every person that's coming in to try and put on a show and say, oh, I went to ATT and I fucking outboxed him or yeah, I grappled nah, them. Nah, it's not happening, it can't bro. happen. Nah, they can't. Yeah. And that's what, that's how it is. It sticks. It mm. sticks, bro. Like it has to, like that, that impression is the most important thing. Mm. You know, it's like, uh, fuck. It's like, bro, you go on a date, you know, yeah. if it's not good the first time, fuck, you, you yeah, know, you gotta make stuff. sure it's good. That's you gotta, why, you know, you um, do you think MMA has like introduced you or opened up your options more so when it comes to girls? Because you know, when girls hear that you're a fighter, yeah, nah, bro, kind of. Um, like it, it some- did, it did, yeah, it yeah. did, yeah. I reckon it did because that I think like people like girls like it. Like, of they're course. like, fuck, you know, this guy can fucking protect me, uh, all yeah. this shit. But also, in, in the sense that, like, people just want to, like, I feel like it's shit. Like, when I was single, I was like, bro, I feel like girls just want to be with me because I fight. Like, mm. if I wasn't doing this, they wouldn't like me. But then I'm like, you know what? Wait, that's true. Fuck yeah. off, bro. That's but right. that's like a rich guy saying a girl doesn't want to be with me if I'm poor. That's like, right. Yeah, but that's it's what true. signed up for. That's true, bro. That's for sure. fucking if it's right. And Get, look, a tr- human attraction on either end between males and females or whatever the fuck you are, um, 
is very much based <laughs> or whatever the fuck you are <laughs> <laughs> male female or whatever the fuck you are tick the box <laughs> whatever the fuck you are <laughs> That's so it's good. True, bro. Bro, that should be a good. That should be like a, on like you go to a medical center. All right, Mister, Mrs, Male, Female, whatever the fuck you are. <laughs> I'm Mister, whatever the fuck you are. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, there's just something about human attraction, bro. Where people are, me personally, anyways, I'm drawn to excellence. People that are passionate and disciplined and care about what they do. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And so I can imagine that when a girl finds out, I mean, it's worth a preface. You've I've just seen a very happy relationship now. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful girl. Love her for you. You guys are an awesome team. Have an amazing dynamic. Yeah. But maybe if we speak more on general terms here, when a girl finds out that you can fight, and yeah. not only can you fight, you can win. I mean, bro. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, nah. Look, it's all right, but bro, you know what the shit thing is about it? Like, um, it's it's fucked because if that's why they like you, then it's not good. Mm. It's not not really good. You want someone to be with you because of like because of the fun, like the the because of you as a person, not because of what you do. Right. You know, like um, like my missus now, like she's she's very successful in corporate and like mm-hmm. she's very high up for her age and whatever, and like. I'm proud of her, you know. She's but, very smart. Yeah, she is yeah. very smart. But I'm not with her because she's very high up in corporate. I'm with her because she's very intelligent. And because she's intelligent, she's high up in corporate. Right. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm smart, I'm good at fighting. Mm-hmm. That's why. It's not because I'm genetically gifted or I've been in a billion street fights. I've never even been in a street fight. Mm. A proper street fight. Yeah. I've been jumped, but I've never even been in one, bro. Why'd like, you get jumped? Um, fuck I've been jumped twice but <laughs> the first time I got jumped was um, uh, these these guys at the station they wanted to fucking jump me for my um, for my uh, my watch and my shoes oh really yeah but bro the watch like was my dad's watch um. that I took out of his like fucking um, his like jewelry box or whatever like to wear and I wanted to be a sick cunt, but I was like bro if I get jumped for this my dad's gonna kill me yeah so I was like it's like double there was bashing. like five fob cunts but they were massive bro yeah and I was at Levo station and I was like like they, they go bro give us your shoes and your watch and I was like um alright well what are you gonna do if I don't like we're gonna jump you I was like alright go <laughs> and I just let him bash me, bro. And they didn't take nothing. And I was like, "Well, fuck! What are you gonna do? Like, yeah, because we're in fucking Livo Station. Like, yeah, no one gives a fuck. I... Yeah, and they hit me and they just fucked off. Yeah. Second time, this guy was bullying this kid at my school, mm-hmm. and the guy was a fat guy. Fuck him, anyways, because I got fucking bashed over him. Yeah, and he's a piece of shit. No. Yeah, they didn't even thank me, bro. Really? Piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. These guys in two grades younger, they walked up to him and they were, they were just putting it on him, bro, at recess. Like, they were fucking giving it to him, bro. And I was like, bro, leave him alone, bro. He's so fucking... He, bro, this guy would sit by himself at the back where everyone hangs out and he would just sit on his own. Like, we'd all be hanging out and he would just be like two seats over by himself. Yeah. But he was introverted. He was quiet, bro. Mm-hmm. But he was a gronk, like... To people, and that's probably why he got jumped. Like, I'm pretty sure they fucking done it for a reason. Yeah. But, bro, when I saw that, I was like, bro, leave him alone. He's a fat cunt by himself, fucking, you know, like, I'm pretty sure he's having a shit day, too, bro. Yeah. Like, he's got his own problems, bro. Fuck off. And they walked off. The next day, bro, I'm eating my burger with my missus at the time. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm eating my burger. And, bro, all I felt was someone grabbed me from the back, like, hugged me. Like, and I thought it was one of my mates and they hugged me and I saw the guy walking here, like right next to me and bro, the, someone hugged me and all I feel is no. on my nose, bro, right no. on my nose, like four hits, bro, boom, 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 like, and then I was so like, they held you down so that you like, yeah, it. and bro, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, whoa, bro, the guy on my back. Someone grabbed him, took him off me, and then my mate Daniel, 
fucking sick out that dude. <laughs> he, he ran for a flying punch, like boom, on the guy's forehead, broke his hand on the guy's forehead. Bro, I got out and I fucking left hooked the guy. He dropped and I was going to punch him and this guy pulled me off, bro. And I was pissed off because that guy was my mate. I was like, bro, if I just got jumped, don't pull me off. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to bash the guy. Yeah. Like, let me bash him first. Yeah. And bro, it was a massive, like, fucking Yeah, it would have been a scene. At school. Like, Especially at Cecil, man. Shit yeah, like bro. That. Everyone was there. Mm. There was blood everywhere on my shirt. Everyone's dragging me to the office. I'm like, you're fucking dog. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like he's a pussy. I'm like, let's have a fucking pop a go. You know? We the- Two, one, seven, one, yeah. bro. <laughs> bro, we're in the sick bay. I was in the sick bay. And like, I'm there. And then he's walking to the pr- principal's office. I'm like, yeah, let's go, you fucking bitch. Whatever. And then, bro, like, I knew, like, boys back then, too. Like, I was never, like, the one fighting people. Like, I was just, like, I knew people. Yeah. Um, that were more about it. Mm. I wasn't really about it like that. And then, bro, um, the next day, uh, I went to school. Mm-hmm. And I had my shirt was covered in blood, bro. And I went up to his older brother and I gave it to him. I'm like, give this to your brother. And just tell him that I'm not going to fucking figure out what happened. And apparently that guy was full paranoid and shit. Yeah, I would be. Yeah, and then he was fucking... Because he thought I was going to call people to his house. He was mm. like, bro, I was sitting with my rifle. And I was like, fucking... He lives in Kemp's Creek. He's like, bro, I was sitting with my rifle in my house. And I was just fucking waiting for people to pull up, eh? And then I was like, bro, I'm not going to do shit. I go, fuck you. You're a pussy. I go, if you ever want to have a one-on-one, let's do it. Yeah. You know? That's the thing, right? Like, there's no fucking... You don't walk away from that feeling like a champion or a winner because you know that someone was holding your arms down. And you know that the second you got out, that you fucking threw a clean hook on him. Bro, you want to hear a crazy story to that? Tell me. Fuck, 10 years later, I've become a fighter, yeah? Yeah. My fourth fight, I'm cutting weight to 66, bro. Guess who's at the gym that I'm cutting weight at painting the walls? The guy who jumped me. No way. Bro, I'm sitting in the sauna for six hours, in and out, in and out, in and out. Six dying. hours? Yeah, literally oh. cutting weight. Like, bro, I was there from like 6 p.m. to like midnight. I was in there uh, mm. fucking dying, dying, dying. Every time I walk out, I can see him looking at me in the corner of my eye. Like, literally like that. Yeah. Bro, I wanted to say something to him, but I was so fucked, I couldn't talk. Yeah, you probably didn't even have saliva in your mouth I didn't, speak. no. And I, I was like, I was looking at him and I was like, bro, fuck. I go, fuck, well, like, look at you. Like, you're just here and I'm yeah. here. It's all good, bro. Look, in right. the long game, I think, you know, the, the cream always rises to the top. And people that are really bowed and really are passionate in whatever avenue it is, whether it's MMA or whether it's in finance or whether that's in podcasting or whatever, just like whatever discipline you decide to focus on, the people that are really about it will rise to the top. And those pussies that kind of just come out and say, oh, you know, yeah. I'm going to get my boy to hold your arms down and punch you in the face because yeah. I know I can't do it myself. I mean, bro, you end up painting gym walls. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. Pussy, bro. But I don't really... It, it is what it is, man. Made me like who I am today. Do you think it shaped you? Like that experience? Yeah, fucking oath, bro. It shaped me. Because like, after that, I would have never like done that to someone. Yeah, of like, course. Like, I would never like fucking do that. Like, I would never like punch fucking, like, I would never like jump someone unless they deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Unless like, there needs to be five people to bash the guy, I wouldn't do it. And the problem is, right, like, you because you deal with violence on a daily basis and because you are so exposed to it and, you know, it's literally your life, yeah. um, you probably don't want that anywhere else. No. You're probably not looking for problems. You're probably nah, not looking for fights. Nah. Bro, honestly, I have a crack with anyone, but, like, nah, not really, bro. Yeah. Not really. Because, yeah. like, I'll get dicked, bro. Yeah. Like... Everyone's a snitch. Like, everyone will snitch on me. Like, I'll get snitched on or something will happen, bro. Like, mm. you'll get fucking shit. And to be honest, to be fair, bro, like, um, how can I put it? Bro, like, if I break my hand in a show fight, it fucking means I can't train all week. It's mm. shit, bro. Like, breaking your hand's shit. Like, yeah. I probably don't want to punch anyone in a show fight. I, I envision myself, like, elbowing a knee. 
and clinching and like sweeping and shit. That'd be pretty fun. But <laughs> but like that, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to unless I had to. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Like if you have to be, if you are put in that position, then you've got the skills to do yeah. it. But if you but can, I'll get in trouble more so than any other person. And bro, like you can't really get away with bashing anyone these days, bro. Mm. And like the thing with me is like I'll just go. I'll just keep. up. Yeah. You know. Which is a terrifying thought. That's yeah. scary. I'd grapple maybe in a street fight. I'd probably like use wrestling and tap the person. Yeah. Or like put them to sleep so they can't do anything and then I'll wake them up and go, bro, relax, chill, chill, keep mm. back. You know, like, but I don't know, in the moment it's different. Well, the thing is with a street fight, right? Like you're looking at so many variables. Like you're looking at a hard concrete ground and you're looking at... You yeah. don't know if they're, they're packing, if they've got heat, if they've yeah, got knives. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what Everyone's I mean? packing these days, bro. Unfortunately, especially in Western Sydney, man, it's the harsh reality of it. Yeah, everyone is packing, bro. And so, you know, something is just even hitting your head against concrete, man, when you're not on that canvas or you're not on that yeah. kind of matte material. Dude, like you're looking at permanent brain damage. You're looking at heavy CTE. Yeah. People aren't coming out of that. You no. know, like how many King hits happened in King's Cross at its peak? Yeah. You know, like it was a big problem. And yeah. you don't want, especially if you're a trained professional and that's what nah. you do, you don't want to be around that. Bro, sure. I'm just scared of what I could do, like, if I did king at someone. Yeah. Because on the street, like, I don't give a fuck about, like, being fair. Mm. Like, bro, I'll king at someone if they deserve it. Yeah. But I don't, like, after it, if they're fucked, like, I don't want to. Of course. Uh, that's pretty scary, bro. Of like, course, bro. There's there's a reality to fighting, you know, yeah. when you're in a cage and everything. Like, if I kill someone in the cage, I don't care because we signed <laughs> up for that. Like, <laughs> you know, but if I just wanted to belt someone and they ended up dying, bro. Fuck, yeah, that's, that's when you're shit. conscious, man. Yeah, bro, it's bad. Yeah, for sure. And I want to shift gears a little bit. Yeah. Um, we are talking a little bit about cutting weight before and how you go into the sauna and stuff like that. And yeah. You really dehydrate your body. Um, but what's interesting about you is that your diet is not one of a normal nah. day-to-day person. Nah. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, so I'm a vegan, bro. Mm. Um, uh, it's 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 really good, man. It helps me like have a lot of energy. Like I feel like I have way more energy as a vegan. Like the, when I train, like I feel like I can go for longer. Um, it, I don't know if it's placebo, but I do feel like I have an edge. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. like, bro, like, I'm pretty strong. What like, what shifted in your mind to make that decision? Like, hey, I want to be a vegan. I f- bro, I spied this guy who I met on the side of the road rapping. Yeah. And he was a Muay Thai champ. And yeah. I invited him to my house to spa. Mm. And he came and, bro, he was fucking so agile, so quick and, sh- and like, good. And I was pretty shit back then. And then I was like, bro, like, what's your diet? He's like, bro, I've been vegan since I was 14. I was like, what? And it was a tank, How old were you at this time? Uh, 21. Right. Yeah. Bro, like, it was, since he was 14, he didn't eat meat. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck, bro? I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. And then I fucking researched it. And I followed this alkaline diet, Mm. which alkalizes your body. It's really good, bro. It's by a Dr. Sebi. He, he was Sebi. Michael Jackson's doctor. Right. And Beyonce's doctor. And Jay-Z's doctor. When oh, they, when damn. They, yeah, when they were really, really sick. Like, this guy's a holistic doctor. And his diet is what? So, what's an alkaline-based diet? A, it's about eating foods that are alkaline in pH. Mm-hmm. Like, or foods when they digest, they turn yeah. alkaline. So, like what? Um, Like, lemon is alkaline. Mm-hmm. Not in itself, but like... It, it, when you eat it, it becomes alkaline. Kale, um, amaranth, which is a grain, spelt, uh, potatoes. Um, there's heaps, bro. Like all the fruits, like watermelon with seeds, banana with seeds. Um, like there's there's a whole list. Like you yeah. can look it up. Um, there's hectic interviews of him, bro. And alongside another 150 doctors, two three years ago. They all got murdered in like one year, and it was they were all unexplained for, bro. Conspiracy, you think? Yeah, like apparently, like the medical industry like killed all these people off because the world is very weird. Yeah, because I mean, their diets promote like 
actual healing. Mm. Like it's not like go buy this fucking meds and fucking take it. Yeah, you they're know? not promoting vaccines. Yeah, it's um it's an interesting um discussion. I often have it on this podcast. You know, vegan versus meat eating versus keto versus um fasting versus you know all these different components that you know a lot of people back very strongly. But I don't know many people that are in an MMA cage yeah, that are doing a vegan yeah. diet. That is very rare. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and you're not the poster boy for veganism. Nah, I'm not. Most I'm not. vegans are very like. Nah, oh, I see, but I say... hate that. Like, fuck, like, bro, relax. Mm. Like, I hate people that preach about shit. Like, kick I... back, bro. Like, we don't. Like, bro, I love the flavor of meat. I love eating it. Like, it's all that. But I think eating a dead carcass is probably not good for your body. Mm. Like, I don't know. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I mean, look, I think there's... The energy of it, though. It's not even just about protein or whatever. Like, Mm. that animal eats plants to get that protein. If that animal ate, didn't eat, fucking plants bro it would not have that protein in its body like yeah it'd be fucking skin bone but um uh it's like the the animal is a middleman mm. i just go straight to the source that's how i look at it yeah and i mean look if you had like a little machine that had like a radar on the energy and life that certain foods have in your supermarket, like you put it up against an apple, it's going to go off the scales, you know, because the apple's alive and thriving. Yeah. And it's full of vitamins and minerals yeah. and good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to be going off the blitz. And if you yeah. go over to like some frozen meat section, it's just going to be fucking dead. Yeah. Because you know, it can sit there for six months and it's yeah. not alive and it's not. It's not alive. It's, it's not alive. It's dead. It's like I got nothing against it, but like, bro. If you were killing the animal and eating it yourself, it'd be better than going and buying it. Yeah, I agree with that, 100%. There's a strong argument to to be made about hunting as a form of, like, gathering your meat. Yeah. You know, because, firstly, there's a lot less waste. Yeah. You know, um, hopefully one day that's an endeavor I can kind of pursue. Yeah. Because I think the factory farming system that we've got at the moment where we're just breeding chickens or we're breeding cows in masses just to feed people big macs i mean it's just so wasteful and so cruel yeah you know like you can find a million documentaries on netflix about it and yeah bro it's it's it is very sad to see there just hasn't to my knowledge anyways been many alternatives offered for the mainstream yeah look bro like again it's personal preference Mm. but like if if the excuse is, oh, I just, I can't get protein from this or that or whatever, bro, it's like, like bro, you can. Like, I'm a walking billboard for it. Yeah, literally. I mean, like, I look at you and you look like a fucking athlete, man. Yeah, that's right. So, and I don't like... What's your day-to-day diet look like? Um, In camp? Yeah. Bro, I have a vegan protein shake. I put berries in it, whatever. Mm. Um, I, or I have my oats. Yeah, are you having that with water? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I don't like using, like alternative milks and shit like they mm. just fuck my gut like yeah just just you know what i mean like i have that then after bro i have like um it's called seitan seitan is made from bread mm-hmm. they wash dough and when they wash that dough um uh the the protein of the of the of the bread actually conforms and it looks like chicken bro it's crazy really yeah and i ate that you can get it from vegan lebanese shout out to vegan lebanese yeah that's the one my sponsors shout out vegan lebanese they're in bondi right yeah 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 yeah. bro they're hectic and you can eat you can eat that and bro it's it's got more protein than meat in it Mm. um i'll have that with like maybe quinoa or something i have two of those so i have one of them before training one of them after training and then in between i have a banana right I have a banana before training. Like, And are you mapping out your diets? Like, are you very strategic about it? No. As soon as I wake up, mm-hmm. I eat. Right. I don't think about it. I eat straight away. Yep. And before bed, I'll eat something. Okay. But um, something I recommend to everyone that diets, and this is Ash's advice, Pepsi Max. 
What? Have a can of Pepsi Max, bro. If you are ever hungry and you don't, you shouldn't be eating, have a can of Pepsi Max. I'm calling cap on that. No, nah, yeah, bro. Because it, it cuts out the hunger. Like when you're cutting weight, bro, and you're not eating much and you're training hard. But isn't that like loaded stuff. with sugar and shit? Well, Pepsi Max is like sugar free. Hmm. It's got other bad shit in it. Yeah. But bro, like fuck, you need fucking something. Like. Oh, look, if you're training hard and you're pushing your body to extreme limits if you're in a fight camp for example right and you try to cut weight it kind of makes sense because you get that caffeine spike you get that sugar spike and you know you're going to burn that off in the following session or you've already burnt it off in the session before that makes sense um just use that approach with caution i yeah. guess don't be sitting down having 10 pepsi max no, no, no. losing weight. one can one can yeah one can a day i have like i have an after training like mm. with my meal yeah it just gives me a bit of a uh, like yeah. a buzz you know yeah um, but yeah, even a box of strawberries before bed. Yeah, that that's sounds hectic. good. That's that sounds hectic. really a good. A whole box, bro. Just sit there. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. Eat it, bro. It's the best. Especially when you're cutting weight because it's only 256 calories. Right. Oh, no, not even 156 calories. Yeah. Nothing. And you get the flavor and the juiciness yeah, of the it's strawberries. Crackers. It's amazing, bro. Yeah. So I, ha- uh, I ate that, you know, like, mm. but it's really good. Like, um, you just got to diet you, strategically. Yeah. How did you find that transition going from, you know, someone, your, what's your background? Turkish and Iranian. Yeah, Turkish and Iranian. So you guys are big meat eaters. Like yeah, barbecues yeah. are a big part of, Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, how did you make that transition from a culturally very barbecue meat orientated lifestyle to suddenly, oh, I'm eating quinoa? Yeah, it's, it was actually difficult, but of course. I did it for a week and I was cooking my, all my own shit. Mm-hmm. Bro, but my mum and my missus, they're wizards at cooking, bro, and they made me fucking hectic. Like, they were pretty supportive of it? Yeah, like, mm. they got it, They got the gist of it, and they did it. And like, my missus will eat vegan with me if I eat mm-hmm. vegan or whatever. Like, she's into that shit too. Yeah. But, like, I don't force her to not eat yeah. whatever she wants. Like, bro, she, le- she leads her own life too, you mm. know? Like, and that's why, like, like... I, I took responsibility for it. Like, hmm. I was like, all right, bro, if I'm going to turn vegan, I can't just like, tell my mom, make everything vegan. Yeah. I'm just going to go cook my own and shit. And there's heaps of options now, like you were saying before, the um, vegan Lebanese place. Yeah, which, heaps. Which is obviously more health orientated, but if you want something indulgent, like there's Lord yeah. of the Fries on George Street and Paramount yeah. Art, there's I'm pretty vegan, sure they're vegan. There's, bro, there's vegan options everywhere. Like, that's, bro, one, the, the hardest thing, bro, was going out with my mates and eating because they'll go, they'd want to go somewhere. And I'd feel like they didn't want to go to a specific place because there wasn't like a vegan option or something. Yeah. But like, that would bother me. I'm like, bro, honestly, like, I don't care. Like, I'll have fucking a bowl of chips or some shit. Yeah. You'll fuck. come to Trees of Chases. Yeah. Like, like, have a bread roll with chimichurri yeah, and tomato oh, bro, onion. Bro, that's... Fuck. <laughs> bro, that's, that shit is hectic. Your chimichurri story is hilarious. I bro, love it. I full pumped the whole thing in one night. Yeah. So ask, ask my missus, bro. She fucking seen me do it. Who'd, um... A hood hit me up one day and he goes, bro, can you get me some chimichurri? Yeah. I love that chimichurri <laughs> stuff, which is like a herb sauce with oregano, parsley, garlic, like all good stuff, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. And I rock up to trading with like this jar, like this tub, like styrofoam white tub, like yeah. this big, you know, a good amount of chimichurri. Yeah. A normal family, it lasts them like two weeks, maybe yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, You know, because you're only ever supposed to put it on like bread or on meat or on fish or something. Yeah, like it's yeah. a sauce. It's complimentary. Yeah. I see you at trading the next day. <laughs> bro my stomach was fucked <laughs> legit bro i fucking pumped it bro yeah in one sitting that is wild like, i love getting bread and just dipping it in shit mm. and just eating it. like i'm a mezze kind of guy you know yeah like bro fuck bro i pumped it how stoned were you bro i was so ripped <laughs> i was fucking so ripped i'm like i was a mood you bitch is fucking hectic <laughs> Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I went to this like um, this place like on the weekend, and and they had Jimmy Choo there, mm-hmm. and I tried it, and I was like, bro, this Jimmy Choo's got nothing on fucking your Jimmy Choo. Yeah, bro, <laughs> Jimmy Choo is not something you can just pick up, man. I mean, you would get it because of your background. Um, it, it's a it's a craft. It's a handmade yeah. thing. There's a lot Everyone's of love. Everyone's got their own recipe. Eh? For sure, for sure, yeah. dude. You know the Chileans do it to the Euro- different to the Uruguayans, and so if you just get this white English chef that goes, oh yeah, I know how to make Jimmy Choo. Yeah, you know, just throws it together. It's like yeah. you're never gonna get that. That's you're right. You're never gonna get that essence. That nah. thousands and thousands of years of perfecting this thing. No, nah, they won't. No, yeah. that's right. Actually, I gotta stock you up again soon. Yeah, bro. Yeah, not right now because I'm dieting. Yeah, fair enough. 
But um, after, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, 100%. I'd love it, bro. I'd, I'd love that shit. Talk to me about your fight. What's going on? Um, bro, just camp started properly this week. Mm-hmm. Like, it took me like three weeks to get into camp yep. properly. Like, because, bro, COVID fucked me, bro. Like, yep. we are meeting up like on the down low, like training. But mm-hmm. you, you, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> we were training. Yeah, yeah wait, we no. Were. At the park. At the park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. We'll, we'll, like, like, I was still getting my rounds in every night. Yeah. But, bro, like, fuck. Fucking, like, bro, like, doing fucking three hours of classes, going to strip for kind of the morning, fucking everything. Like, it, it took a, bro, like, it took, it was, it took a while to get back into it. Like, mm-hmm, I, I thought I could just, yep, yeah, next week, boom, I'm back. Yeah. But it wasn't, bro. It was like, all right. I gotta stop doing this. I gotta start doing this. Yeah, off the weed, off the vapes. Bro, it was yeah. hard, bro. Mm. So I was like, "Fuck!" Like, I gotta like week by week, give up one thing and mm. take on another thing. Replace it with this. Replace it with this. Yep, absolutely. And like now, bro, I'm back. Like, bro, I'm so fit at the moment, and yep. I'm not even fit, fit yet. Like, yeah. let's look at my resting heart rate. Fifty. That's that right. is crazy. Yeah. But I'm not fit right now. Like, I'll be 35. 50 resting heart rate is wild, man. I'll be 35 on fight week. Damn. I'll be 35. Yeah, I get fit, bro. Yeah. I get really fit. Yeah, I mean, I've seen your body in fights. Let's see if I can pull it up here, man. But you shred. Like, you really cut. Yeah. Still this fucking video. Like, yeah, man. You, you. You really have... I mean, even here, bro, like, you can really just see your body, the way it's defined and cut, and yeah. it's kind of hard to tell when the internet's not loading. There we go. Yeah. That's me at, like, 70.5. Yeah. That's That was, like, before the weigh-in itself. And that fire in your eyes just <laughs> burning. I'm like, I'll fuck anyone up. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'll fight my grandma for a UFC contract. I'm serious. <laughs> Super said that the other day and I thought about it. I was like, bro, yeah, I full would fight my grandma or yeah. my grandfather. Anyone, so, bro, I'll fight. You got um, Neem now and I'm going to clip this part. If you've got a message to Neem, we're going to send this to him directly through message. What do you want to say to him right now? Neem, bro, I'm going to fucking pump you. And then like, like, like just I'm going to pump you in every way. Like, <sighs> Neem, I can't wait to fucking pump you, bro. You, Honestly, you're my like nemesis of my life. Like, like, uh, how can I put it? Like, bro, because of me, people know who you are. And that burns me because you fucking, you got the better of me that night. But you know what, bro? You didn't. I lost before I walked in there. And I'm just going to show you why, why you got lucky that night. You got fucking lucky, bro. I'm going to pump you. And I'm going to make sure your all your fans that are there, all the haters that are there, I'm going to make sure that they know that, you're fucking not near my level, brother. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that if it's grappling, if it's wrestling, striking, whatever, I'm gonna beat you to it. There's not gonna be one single aspect of that fight that you beat me. Nothing. There's not gonna be nothing. I'm gonna make sure that I leave and everyone goes, bro, if I pumped you that night. And I'm gonna make sure when you wake up the next day, you go, you know what? This sport's not for me, bro. I'm gonna make you quit from this sport. Set with love from Lucas Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. That's the truth, bro. That's the truth, man. That you know is what I mean? December 17th at December on the uh, UFN. UFN, December 17th, Bankstown Postway. Get your tickets. If not, it's on Fight TV. Check the Urban Fight Night page. Um, the Urban Fight Night page will have a link where you can uh, stream the fight through Fight TV you, or you can just download the Fight TV app. It'd probably be better if you did that. And um, if not, buy a ticket and come, man. It's double two, double O, brother. We're going to go in there. I will be in the front row, man. Yeah, bro. That. All right, bro. Let the people know where to find you. Let them know. Bro, hood underscore ATT, or you can come to the gym, 83 Wentworth Avenue, Wentworth Field. If you want to have a go, I'm happy to have a go with any of you guys <laughs> to show you what I'm made of. Um, hood underscore ATT, TikTok. Don't add my Facebook because I probably won't accept you because I've just been getting added by all these random pages. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, look, I just, I'll like, if you can follow my journey, it will mean a lot to me. Um, 
even if you just want to see me get knocked out one day, like I don't care, whatever. <laughs> like if you want to see me win, cool. If you want to see me get knocked out, cool. All good. Just buy a ticket because if you buy a ticket or you stream it, that looks good on me. I want you guys to watch. I want you guys to even be there. Um, and please let me inspire you or let me um, let me burn you, whatever you want. Like it's all good, you know. Um, uh, no hard feelings from me. I wish you the best. Beautiful. Good. Thank you, brother. Oh, Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on here, bro. Anytime. That's it, guys.